Hey everyone, my name is Wormzai and I welcome you to the first episode of this VGC Battle Spot series and indeed the first episode on this channel of the BGC Battle Spot Factory. Now, first of all, I'm very excited to be able to start producing this video content for you guys. It's been a great deal of learning over the past couple of weeks with how to use the software, getting the capture card and all that stuff, but I'm still learning new stuff every time that I use the software. As such, your comments are welcomed on the production as well as the content, and I'm hoping with a little more time, the quality will improve with your feedback. So, just a little bit of a precursor. This series will focus on playing the VGC rule set that's found on Battlespot, as you can see, the championship battle rules. And I will be using teams from both myself and players in the community with the aim of climbing the ladder a little higher, hopefully we can get onto the leaderboard somewhere in the UK, top 10, maybe higher if we're lucky, or we indeed have some good runs. So now that we've covered the pleasant trees, let's dive into the ladder and find our first opponent. So as you can see, the team that we'll be using today is Alone and Raichu, Porygon 2, Kartana, Salamence, Gigalith, and Tapu Koko. You may recognize this team, it's a slightly edited version of the Star KO William Tansley team from London Regionals, uh, the replacement being Salamence instead of the Gyarados. The team is a little bit further edited on my own behalf. There are certain sets that have changed, but by and large the team is still the same basic core as William used in London. So. Yes, we want to battle with Star KO's team, and we shall try and find our first opponent. So obviously this team is very old, and it's not quite in favour of the metagame, but it's something that I've been really comfortable using over the past few months, just as something to wind down. But we'll find our first opponent from Japan, a 1500 rated player from Japan, and he will be using... <laughs> Arcanine, Gyarados, Alolan Marowak, Confei, Tapu Koko, and Celesteela. Now immediately I've got a big issue in the form of the Marowak. This team doesn't like dealing with Marowak very well because of the Lightning Rod ability, so Tapu Koko and Raichu are going to be much harder to deal uh, to get around it. So I'm going to need to have to play this very smartly, so how do I want to lead here? I kind of need to lead Raichu just on the off chance that he doesn't lead with Marowak, but it also gives me good fake out pressure, so that's got to be something that I go for first. And I'm also thinking that Porygon 2 could be useful because we'll want to get the Trick Room up. It'll be the best way of dealing with Marowak with Gigalith in the back, so go Gigalith as well. And for the last one, it's either between Tapu Koko or Salamence. I'm leaning more towards Salamence because it actually has Flamethrower, which is my best way of dealing with the Celesteela, so we'll lock in Salamence. Whoops. And I don't think I locked that in, so we may have Tapu Koko. Oh dear. <laughs> Let's see what we got. Well, we know we're going to be leading with Raichu and Porygon 2. So we'll see what he leads with to start off with as well. My opponent leads off with Gyarados and Celesteela. Very lightning weak opening which I imagine is a bait for Marowak to come in, but we'll try and play around that. And Porygon 2 gets an attack boost, which isn't going to be helpful for us. So let's just see who we've got in the back. We've got Tapu Koko, right. So I can put Fake Out Pressure onto either one of these two Pokemon. I probably want to go for the Gyarados just so it doesn't have a chance to Dragon Dance. So 
so E, they count the Arados, and Porygon 2. We could trick room right now, but I don't think it's worth it, so we'll try and Ice Beam into the Celesteela. See what he tries to do. So he's withdrawing Gyarados, probably into the Marowak, yep. Makes sense. No big surprise there. Fake out is negated, and the Celesteela goes for a Leech Seed very cleverly onto Porygon 2, as it's not likely to hold protect. But we're going to go for an Ice Beam, get some somewhat decent damage onto the Celesteela, but it's all going to be healed back with the Leftovers and the Leech Seed. So we didn't accomplish much this turn, unfortunately, but we got the Marowak out onto the field, so we can now start to deal with it as a point of priority. I'm expecting Marowak to go for Boomerang onto the Raichu. It seems more logical to me, so I'm going to use this turn to get off a Slash Psyche onto the Marowak, and we'll use Trick Room on Porygon. We're hoping here that Raichu gets knocked out by the Marowak, of course. If not, we're going to have to be a little bit more savvy with how we play out the turn, but the next few turns as we go into the Trick Room turns. But the general idea is that we're trying to get Gigalith onto the field against Celesteela and Marowak, and it has a decent way of dealing with both, both of the Pokemon on the field. So we're going to get the Saturn Psyche off onto the Alola Marowak. No Protect coming out from it. And this should do a hefty chuck of the damage. Hopefully about 60-70% to 70 if we're lucky. animation go through. About 70%, so we're in a good position. Celestina so goes for Leech Seed onto the Raichu. No surprises there. And it uses Flare Blitz into Porygon. So Marowak takes recoil damage, brings it within decent range of uh, knockout. But obviously we also have Celestina getting its recovery back from the leech seeds. Hmm. Okay, so Raichu didn't go down, we took a bit of a gamble. I'm going to leave Raichu out in the field and just Psychic into the Marowak and recover. This way, if the Marowak doesn't target the Raichu, uh, Raichu should get decent damage onto the Marowak and knock it out. And that gives us a more open alternative to try and use our electric attacks later down the line. The Celesteela comes out into Pompey. Marowak protects. Okay. So he's brought in the Pompey there because its ability triage allows it to use healing attacks with additional priority and hopefully, oh well, he's more than likely to get um, healing back onto the Marowak with probably a heal pulse or a, something along those lines to heal the Marowak up. Hmm. Okay. I'm going to switch in Gigalith on, Mar uh, on Raichu here. I think that's the best option. I'm going to Toxic the Confei to just whistle it down. Try and get it. Try and weaken it a little bit as we go over time. So Gigalith is going to set up the... Sandstream, and it's going to floor healing, which will heal back half of its health. Porygon uses a comfy avoids the attack, and Marowak goes with Shadow Bone onto our Raichu slot, which is now a Gigalith. Does decent damage, obviously holding the flip club. So, we have to assume that the Comfy is going to.
continue its floral healing strategy. So we're going to need to do something a bit bigger. I'm going to use Stone Edge onto the Marowak. I'm hoping that he's not going to protect. And obviously, with its defenses, it's going to probably not KO it. But if we can knock it out, it'll be a bonus. I'm going to switch Porygon into Raichu. Uh, to get back our fake out pressure. Obviously, we can fake out the comfy the next turn, and this will give us an opportunity to hit the Marowak without any real stoppages. So Marowak is going to get healing back up to full health. Giggleish uses Stone Edge, it connects, and the Marowak is down. Very nice, no critical hit needed. Comfy's now on the field, and we got rid of our worst problem, which is the Marowak, and we're now free to start using electric attacks without any sort of hindrance. So Gyarados comes back in. Uh, Intimidate's obviously going to go onto our Giglyph primarily to lower its attack stat. We're going to have to deal with that in the long run, but we still got one turn of Trick Room left. So, the most likely situation is Gyarados is going to want to try and go for a Dragon Dance to try and outspeed the Raichu outside of uh, Trick Room. So I'm going to just go for a reasonably safe Rock Side into both and a Fake Out into the Gyarados. The Comfy is no more of an issue anymore, so it's going to use Draining Kiss into the Raichu. It does modest damage, but nothing really that we can't cope with. I just use this fake out onto the Gyarados. So Gyarados is now going to flinch. Gyarados revealing it's got the Rocky Helmet as well. Uh, Gyarados avoids the Rock Side attack. That's unfortunate. Would have been good damage onto it. But, critically, we're out of Trick Room. And Raichu is now the fastest thing on the field. As uh, so Twisted Dimensions return to normal. So, obviously the Gyarados does threaten our Giglyph very much, but we've managed to get into a situation where our main problem now is dealing with the Celesteela, but hopefully with Tapu Koko ironically in the back and Raichu, we should be able to win out from here. I'm going to Heavy Slam into the Comfy and I'm going to Thunderbolt into the Gyarados. Gyarados should go down quite easily to Thunderbolt. Comfy goes for a Synthesis, keeping itself healthy on the field, not doing too much health back, and he lets the Gyarados go down from a Thunderbolt, and now we're left with three Pokemon to two. No, four Pokemon to two, sorry. As Comfy reveals that it's got the Kibaya Berry. Oh, the Babiri Berry, sorry. By its dark type attacks. So, obviously, Raichu is still taking chip damage, as is the Confei, and Celesteela will have to come back in. We're now in a pretty good position. The Celesteela can't really contend with both Raichu and Gigalith on the field. So, I'm going to Heavy Slam into Confei once more and Thunderbolt into the Celesteela. I imagine the Celesteela is going to Heavy Slam Gigalith this turn, but it protects. Trying to stall out the Raichu's ability to knock us out. No big surprise there. Raichu does go down to a Draining Kiss. Comfy getting back some additional health, but with the Protect from Celesteela, Gigalith is going to get this free Heavy Slam onto the Comfy and it should not quite knock it out. Hmm. Okay, we'll bring Tapu Koko in. Uh, now you may have noticed down on the bottom screen that Tapu Koko has got choice specs. Uh, Will's team use a Life Orb Tapu Koko uh, to great effect in London. Obviously he ended up top 8, losing to Ben Kiriaku in the quarterfinals. Uh, I've chosen to use a bulkier 
and more powerful Tapu Koko. More as the fact of its comfort and it just gives an additional output that allows Coco to get a few extra knockouts onto various opponents. So we're going to continue our heavy slam onto the Confei, try to remove that from the field, and we're going to just Thunderbolt into the Celesteela. This should do a significant amount of damage as the company goes for the synthesis. Again, it's trying to stall out Gigalith's ability to use Heavy Sam onto it. Tapu Koko goes for the Thunderbolt onto the Celesteela. Not quite taking it out, but it is now well in range of any further attack. And the Heavy Sam from Gigalith takes Comfy right back down to the edges of fainting. So again, we're going to Heavy Sam into the Comfy and Thunderbolt into the Celesteela. And we should pick up a double knockout this turn. At the very least, we should pick up the Comfy. Celesteela protects. Comfy uses Draining Kiss, a little bit of additional damage onto Gigalith. Not knocking it out, and this will mean that the Comfy will go down to our Heavy Slam. So, we're in a good position now. And obviously the Celesteela can't now deal with three Pokemon against just itself because the Coco outspeeds it. So yeah, obviously if during this battle our main priority was to try and remove the Marowak from play, which we did very early and that's allowed our Tapu Coco and our Raichu to really power through the rest of his team in the back. Obviously the irony is Tapu Koko actually provided a lot more assistance in this battle than Salamence actually did, which considering that we've run out of time, we'll take those though. But it is a win and obviously getting rid of the Marowak was a priority. So we're going to find another battle and see if we can get another win for today. So our rating is at 1533. Uh, I played a few battles off screen while I was testing the capture card devices, also to get back into the groove of this team. Uh, so we're quite still low on the ladder, but hopefully we can climb up as we go and we can make some headway uh, up the, the, rate, the rankings as we're still waiting for another trainer. Um, but obviously this will likely be going out on Tuesday as we find an opponent from Japan with rating of 1534 using a team of Gigalith, Garchomp, Tapu Koko, Tapu Fini, Kartana and Arcanine. Uh, so our opponent has the Fini, Kartana, Arcanine core, a good solid fire water grass core. He also has a Tapu Koko and the Gigalith and Garchomp kind of suggests to me that the Garchomp could be Sand Veil rather than the conventional rough skin so we're going to have to be wary of that as we go forward. Now there's no fake out pressure so I think that Raichu and Tapu Koko are going to be a good lead here. We'll have to be considerate that the Garchomp could be Scarfed, so we may have to fake out into the Garchomp to stop it from getting off uh, a very fast Earthquake, which would KO both of our Pokemon. In the back, I think we definitely want Kartana here, as it deals with the Tapu Fini very well and can also deal with the opposing Kartana. And our last... I think will be Salamence here. I don't think Gigalith is going to be too useful in this battle, especially if we're not bringing Porygon 2. So we'll lock in there, and obviously this is meant to be a very fast mode of the team. So we're going to be trying to get up a really quick offense and 
use the speed that we get from Coco and Raichu to get the ball rolling and power through the rest of his team. Obviously Raichu's ability Spark Surfer will mean that if Tapu Koko's electric terrain, electric surge ability stays up on the field, Raichu will be the fastest thing on the field. And immediately we see Garchomp Arcanine against our Raichu and Tapu Koko. I'm going to fake out the Garchomp here and with Tap Coco. I could go for a Dazzling Gleam and get some decent damage onto it. I don't know obviously if it's Scarfed. If it is, this would be a really safe play. But at the same time, I can Volt Switch into our Salamance in the back. And I'm going to Volt Switch into the Arcanine. Uh, we can obviously use Salamence to intimidate both Pokemon on the field. He switches out the Garchomp for Tapu Fini. So, not a bad first turn from our opponent. He protects the Garchomp, but he's also protecting the Arcanine as well. So we get Fake Out onto Tapu Fini, nothing really significant there. Does the Tapu Fini have leftovers? It does. This Tapu Fini is very likely a Calm Mind variant. I imagine we could see a Calm Mind coming out as well. We're going to Thunderbolt into the Finny. Uh, any damage that we can get on that will be good. And because we're locked into Choice Specs, we'll Volt Switch into the Arcanine because it protected last turn. It gives us a free option to switch. So our opponent switches back into Garchomp on the Finny. Good play by him. Obviously the Thunderbolt will now do no damage at all. But we do get our Volt Switch off and we can now bring in the Salamence. And again, we will be intimidating both of these physical attackers. Assuming that the Arcanine is a physical attacker, it could be special. But getting the Garchomp down one stage of attack will be significant if the Arcanine does not flare bits into the right tube. It is flare bits into the right tube. We do hang on though, and the Arcanine procs its Citrus Berry. So. Sorry guys. Um, so, Raichu is obviously very threatened now and having Sanaments on the field is not very good. I'm going to bring in Tapu Koko onto the Raichu slot and I'm going to use a Devastating Drake onto the Garchomp to try and remove it from the field. Obviously it may not KO, but we are going to be getting back up the electric terrain, so with any hope we can deal with this Garchomp very effectively now. Garchomp returns, he's bringing back out Tapu Fini. Good play by him, he's recycling, and so now our Devastating Drake is going to do absolutely nothing. Arcanine uses his stream speed onto the Tapu Coco, doing modest damage, but obviously now we want to contend with Finny back onto the field once again. Uh, 
Okay. Uh, I'm going to use nature power here. I'm going to target the Tapu Finny. He, uh, he's been cycling Finny and Garchomp around quite consistently, so hopefully this turn he's going to do the same thing. I'm going to use this turn to try and get Raichu back in. Uh, it's very likely that the Finny may stay in and target with the Muddy Water. But if we can get uh, Raichu in for free, it will mean that we have Fake Out Pressure the next turn and we can start doing some modest damage onto his team. So, let's have a look So, the Finny does stay in, so Tapu Koko is going to use Nature Bat, turns into Moonblast. Also gets a special attack drop onto the Tapu Finny, which is ideal. After I'm going for Flare Blitz into the Tapu Koko slot, this shouldn't KO, but it's going to do some modest damage. And the Finny uses Moonblast. This will go into the Raichu slot, where the Gyarados, uh, the Salamence was, sorry. And that brings the Raichu down. So. In a bit of a situation here. I'm going to switch Kartana in here. And I'm going to go after the Arcanine now to try and beat it down as best as I can. I think a Nature Power Moonblast and a Sacred Sword from the Kartana should knock out the Arcanine. Finny would be free then to try and use Moonblast or a Muddy Water, but I think the Arcanine is putting on more pressure to our team now, and he may be scared that the fact that the Coco might use an Electric Attack, so the Finny protects, which is brilliant. We're going to get rid of the, we're going to remove the Arcanine from play with this double target, doing a hefty chunk of damage. And that is the Arcanine fainted. So Katana also gets the Beast Boost here, which gets us an attack raise. This will be very important in the long run, because we'll be able to deal with Finny more effectively and whatever his last Pokemon is in the back, apart from the Garchomp. The Garchomp now is very much threatened by the Tapu Koko, assuming that it is not Scarfed. We haven't seen the Garchomp actually do that much, so we have to assume the worst here, I would imagine, but we are going to go for a Nature Power into the Garchomp. Uh, a Choice Specs Nature Power Moonblast will pick up the knockout onto the Garchomp. And our Kartana is relatively free to go for a Leaf Blade into the Tapu Fini, which should also pick up the knockout. So we potentially will get a double knockout this turn. The Finny obviously is under a lot more pressure from the Kartana, and our Kartana is Scarfed. So whatever the Garchomp might have, if it is Scarfed itself, should mean that our Kartana will still get an attack off. But it is not Scarfed, so this Garchomp will be going down. That's such a beautiful sight. So we've managed to use our opponent's terrain against them with the mystery terrain, being able to use nature power to set up Moonblast. And obviously this is a very good way of getting for dealing with Garchomps with this team, especially paired up with the mystery terrain. So our opponent's last will be his Gigalith. And unfortunately, Kartana at plus two attack. It's not gonna. It's not gonna end well. So Nate's power onto Gigalith and Leaf Blade onto Gigalith. Our opponent may forfeit here. I wouldn't be 
be surprised, and yes, he does forfeit. So, another good win there. Our opponent played us very well in the opening turns of the match. He was cycling between Tapu Fini and Garchomp really well, and he was stopping us from getting any sort of meaningful damage onto either of them, with Thunderbolt being... Uh, Garchomp being immune to the Thunderbolt, I should say. And obviously, we weren't able to get any sort of significant damage. Uh, we made a conscious choice to uh, lock into Nature Power with our Specs Coco. Uh, in the long run, that turned out to be a very clever move because it meant that once the Garchomp was onto the field and he couldn't deal, um, and he couldn't deal with either of the two that was on the field. It meant that Moonblast was going to always KO. So, two wins today for our first episode. That's always a very nice feeling. Uh, I'd like to thank you guys for joining me. And obviously I hope that the, the rambling was coherent. Obviously this is my first time doing any sort of recording, as I said. So, again... Uh, anything about the quality, the commentary is all gratefully received and I hope that you enjoyed this episode and I will see you in the next. Bye bye for now.